Hi, I'm Valder Beebe. I'm the host and the visionary of the Valder Beebe show, God Talk. Some people talk to God and others believe that God talks to them. Join us in conversation with authors, religious clergy, metaphysicians, and regular people like you and I and God Talk. God Talk is a podcast available on FM Radio, Roku TV, and online. Subscribe at ValderBBShow.com. You can also subscribe at YouTube.com slash ValderBBShow. Join the conversation of God Talk. I'll see you there. Well, I'm reminded you to know I have Alex Flint with me this morning. He's the Executive Director of Alliance for Marketing, Market Solutions, and he's here to talk about climate change. Alex, let me ask you, why, a car, why is a carbon tax um, better than climate change solutions? I don't understand that. Yeah, well, first, Valder, we have to recognize the scale of the problem, right? We have been emitting carbon pollution to the atmosphere for decades. If we continue on the current pace, uh, the best estimate is that global average temperature will increase about six degrees Fahrenheit and the seas will come up 30 inches. So we have a serious problem. And if we're going to face it head on, we need a solution that is scaled to that kind of problem. Policymakers that I talk to really have three options. They can regulate. They can regulate every aspect of the economy, tell us what cars we can drive, what air conditioners we can have, what motors we can have. Or they can subsidize good behavior. Um, the government's $30 trillion in debt and I don't think can afford the sorts of subsidies it can take. Or we can do a market solution. And, and to be very straightforward, a market solution says we're going to put a price on carbon pollution. So any activity that emits carbon pollution into the atmosphere, we're going to tax that. And, and as we do that, you can be assured I'm going to encourage all of my friends, don't pay the tax change the way you conduct your life so that you do not have to pay that tax. So buy a more fuel efficient vehicle, buy an electric vehicle. When you're thinking about replacing your hot water heater, think about an energy efficient one or an electric one instead of a gas one. That's the way you use markets to change the amount of carbon pollution that goes into the atmosphere. So it's a tax conversation and I know tax conversations can be awkward, but it's also a real conversation about what we need to do to address this problem. Well, my real question is, why do we, and it would take more time than we have, but a tax versus change behavior. Why can't we get people or companies, companies and people to change their behavior? Because we're talking about survival the way you say it. So we are talking about whether our lives and the lives of our kids or grandkids are really impacted negatively by climate change. And we are going to have to change what we do. The question is, what's the incentive for people to change what they're going to do? And what I will tell you is that if we can start taxing the things we don't want, like carbon pollution, and use that revenue to instead reduce other taxes, like I'm not an advocate of more taxes. I hate taxes. But I'm an advocate of using the tax code as a disincentive for harmful activities and an incentive for good activities. So any dollars they raise with the carbon tax, I say reduce the income tax because I think we should all be able to keep as much of our earnings as we possibly can. That's the incentive that will make, I mean, frankly, it'll make me the next time I go out and buy a car think, okay, what's the best car? How do I avoid paying these increased prices because of this carbon tax? That's how you actually drive good behavior. There has to be some good actors out there. So what are businesses doing to address climate change? So one of the huge changes we're seeing in the politics of this is that in the last several years, a lot of corporate leaders have recognized, and it's in part because their customers, their employees, uh, our trading partners are insisting on it, are acknowledging climate change and that we need to do something. And frankly, the corporate leaders that I work with do not like regulations. They, they think subsidies are unreliable. They like market solutions because it's consistent with the way companies run their businesses, right, to, to, to buy goods and services as, as inexpensively as possible. So for corporate leaders, the market approaches, including a carbon tax, are the approach that they think, frankly, will last the several decades necessary to address this problem. My next question, I'm sure there is no answer, but why is it important for Congress to address climate change? They won't address anything, but why is it important for them to address this? 
you know, it's tough working with Congress. It's divisive and, and it is a real challenge. But, you know, the way I think about it is that as this problem becomes more real for those of us who just live in the country, I mean, we're going to – this drought in the southwest, the fire season this year, I tell politicians, remember, you get elected in November just after hurricane and forest fire season. You have to be able to speak to these issues in a way that relates to voters. The pressure is continuing to build. Uh, particularly for my Republican friends, I say we have to have solutions that talk to these issues in ways that people can say, OK, that's really going to make a difference. This would make a difference. And I, I, I think, you know, I insist on being optimistic in part because I think Americans are leaders and eventually we're going to figure this out and we're going to do the right thing. All right. So if someone wants to kind of give Congress a push to do the right thing. Is there any place online about the carbon tax? Well, if they want more information, our website, amsresearch.org, has lots of information. And, and I really do encourage people, get involved, learn about the issue, and advocate with your policymakers. It, it's important. And, you know, I've, I'm starting to really think about this with the next generation, so we have an obligation to address this. I'm going to close now, Alex, but... It's time for Texans to vote. Uh, we're sending people to Congress and voting for an attorney general. A whole lot of voting is going on. Nowhere have I seen anyone talk about climate change, and they're re either running for uh, an office or trying to be reelected. No one has said a thing. So yeah. maybe I'll well, give them your name. <laughs> yeah. Do and let them know we've done polling and focus groups in Texas, and this is emerging as an issue. And I think it's going to—it's emerging as an issue among the voters who make a real difference in some of these close races. And it does matter. Thank you so much, Alex Flynn, for being here on the Valder BB Show to talk about the best way to address climate change. I appreciate you. Thank you. Appreciate you. I'm Valder BB. I host the Valder BB Show, broadcast on radio and television. And this is my phone pouch. My phone pouch is a great invention. It allows me to go hands-free, pocket-free, purse-free, even belt-free. Head on over to myphonepouch.com.